No one buys 100,000 with a click on the internet, right? So we said, okay, we are software as a service company, but on top of that, we do personal service. And that's how we became a SaaS squared company. I think our organic growth is coming from two kind of things, expanding within our existing markets and then expanding to new markets in Europe. We're also looking at inorganic growth. Are there players which we could team up with, which we could acquire? Commission will stay around for quite some time, but I assume this pricing will stay somewhat like that. You have a certain mix of SaaS fee plus uh, commission. Welcome to the Platform Pioneers, a show about the bright minds behind the world's largest digital platforms and the stories of how they built them. I am your host, Kuros, and together we'll uncover the secrets behind creating, scaling, and managing some of the most successful platforms out there. Welcome back to the Platform Pioneer podcast. Today, I'm uh, extremely excited to have our guest, Paul Philipp Herrmann, founder of Event Inc., Euro's leading online marketplace for booking and managing corporate events of all kinds. Paul is also an Oxford alumnus who has completed a master's in, in internet studies and I would say is a veteran in online businesses, marketplaces over the last, yeah, basically 10 to 15 years. But maybe without uh, further ado, Paul, maybe introduce yourself to our podcast and say what was your CV so far that led you to found Event Inc. Yeah, so my name is Paul Philip Herman, as you just mentioned. And first of all, thank you for having me here. I give a very quick run through of my past jobs and, and stations in, in life. So as, as you already mentioned, I studied, and but before I studied internet science at Oxford, I, I read law here in Germany, in Hamburg. So I'm a lawyer by training and then turned internet uh, entrepreneur. Right after my studies, I started my first venture which was an online career page and thereafter moved to, after a short stint at BCG for three years, I moved on to, to Rocket Internet where I built a real estate classifieds platform. So think Immobilien Scout, but for emerging markets. And then I moved forward to, to, to Eventing. And Eventing was not actually founded by me, to, to clarify that. It was founded by Jana Enstaler or Schmidtholz at the time. And I joined her as a co-CEO a bit later into the, the path of eventing. But when you would ask Jana, she would always say, Paul, well, you're actually a co-founder because you kind of reinvented the business. And that's maybe where I'd like to start because eventing was founded to solve one problem that has not really been solved in the past. If you want to find a good venue or a good hotel or a meeting room, um, it was very difficult to find that online. You could find online flights, you could find car rentals, you could find houses um, for sale as well as for rent. But it was very difficult to find the perfect venue for your PR event, for your Christmas party, or the perfect hotel, which could accommodate large groups of, you know, 50, 60 people with seminar rooms, etc. There was no offering online for that. So that was how the idea was born to build a classified platform. Over time, we realized that this problem is much more complex for businesses because they have procurement departments that have certain requirements, they have purchasing conditions, they have payment topics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we expanded and started to offer a complete purchase platform. So it's really like now an online purchase platform for the entire meeting and events industry, which is called MICE industry. Something I had to learn stands for meeting incentive convention exhibitions. This industry is the industry we're at. In Germany, it's an 80 billion industry, much larger than I would have expected. And for that industry, we are solving the entire digitization. So that's really how we got to build eventing. I mean, first of all, that's a great founding story and it's something that a lot of platforms, marketplaces that we had you on the show, I think have in, have in common kind of like finding an initial problem that you wanted to solve for, but then seeing maybe a, a way bigger problem or something that needs to be solved before when tackling that, that problem. Maybe what's always good for the audience uh, to hear, how were companies that are now uh, using your, your software platform kind of like booking, organizing, etc., corporate events before there was eventing? So I think many of your listeners are probably... Uh, managing directors of companies or, or, or departments, etc. And I always give this example is what usually happened is that someone said, hey, we have this big client event and they go to their assistant or they go to HR or marketing and say, 
we have this big important meeting you know with all the management or with our most important clients make sure you find a super great venue we want to have the best of the best then the next question would be how much is the budget and it's like i don't know because i have no idea about events so make it as cheap as possible then you have someone whose job is not to organize events to start googling searching having no idea if the offers they are receiving are good having no idea whether the places they they are requesting offers for are good enough for what they have to do they don't know everything that entails in such an event and then those people would suddenly have to do and make sure this super important event is actually being organized so that's how it was <laughs> now with us you go to the platform you have pre-selected you have reviews from other business owners and you have a service team on top that can give you this security of knowing that where you're going is actually a great place and you can handle it because our team does nothing but that it's all experts right so i think that's the difference between before and now right right and i think I think that that makes total sense because I was personally in that situation a couple of times before, and it's exactly as you described. You you have someone out of your team trying to Google to run it. It's a very, I would say, a very very time consuming process. You also mentioned there's really a a one stop shop solution for for companies and corporates to book and also to manage. What was the evolution of features that you mentioned? You mentioned there is payment involved, there is booking involved, there's uh, managing approval processes. How did you go about, what was the right sequence for features? What was the MVP, so to speak? And, and how did you decide on adding on features, for example, like payment processing, which is also something that we discussed a lot of this program? Yeah. So at the very beginning, we focused on event venues. So really the one for your Christmas party, for the big brand events, etc. Over time, we started first realizing that we need to expand our portfolio. So the companies are not only looking for venues for parties or, or big brand events, but they also look a lot for um, hotels where they can hold seminars and trainings. They look for team events. They look for meeting rooms just for a couple of hours. So the first thing is that we kind of horizontally said, we want to be the one-stop shop where you can get a meeting room for four hours but you can also go and get the Olympia Stadium if you have a really, really big event and everything in between, right? So from three people to 80,000, you should find whatever you need for your company. Um, so that was the first iteration, if you want. And the, before that, it, as I said, it was just the venues, the event venues. Then we iterated more along on a, on a more vertical kind of expansion. So first it was kind of find the right place. Over the time, we said, hey, it's not just having a platform because when you, it's slightly different if you look at booking where you book a hotel, right? If you book a hotel for two nights, it costs a couple of hundred euros, that's fine. But in our system, we said you need some service. People want the assurance of an expert if they spend 100,000 on a platform. No one buys 100,000 with a click on the internet, right? So they need the help of someone says, look, I know the place. You also need to make sure you have this stuff covered. You maybe want to save some money by switching from, you know, cocktails to just long drinks because you need less personnel, saves you 20 euros per person. And this kind of information is all the help you need. So we said, okay, we are software as a service company. But on top of that, we do personal service. And that's how we became a SaaS Square company. So we are SaaS Square company, software is service, but on top of that, we have service from, from the teams of experts. And then the next iteration, which is the one we are in right now, is that we said, and along this path, there are so many different pieces that benefit our clients from approval processes to purchasing conditions, to cancellation conditions, to payment handling, etc which all make the process for them much much easier and so they get the full end-to-end -end solution from our side the only thing we don't do is is being on site we're not an event agency in, in, for that matter we partner with event agencies but we are not an event agency in the classical way oh and i think that is a a great example and we had it here and there on the show of kind of like really 
broadening what you do for the customer, kind of like really trying to become a, a one-stop shop on a couple of fronts. What's interesting specifically on this point, and it's very different for, for different platforms, where do you spend in your, I would say, kind of like during your workday, where do you spend most time? Is it most on supply? And I would say it's probably not, or is it most on demand kind of like on your customers trying to win new people? Like how did you go that flywheel initially going? Was it hard to get venues on the platform? Or was it, and I guess it is, harder to get kind of like customers using the platform? So that's a tricky one. <laughs> so we have a large partner team that really makes sure our, our venues, so we call our venues partners, that they are being taken care of. And that was from the day one. It was a very important team making sure we built the right features for them. We make it easy for them. Having said that, I think getting all those Big clients on board is where I and some of my colleagues are spending most of their time on because marketing department, obviously with SEO and SEA is getting all these inquiries. And on top of that, we have an kind of, if you want an enterprise sales team that goes um, to try to win tenders, to pitch to those really large corporations. And obviously that is very time consuming and sales cycles, they are rather long, uh, but they are also really worth it because once you win a large company of which we have won quite a few last year. You get a lot of business, of course, and you get the full service integrated, right? Correct. If you kind of like look at this ecosystem of partners and customers, what we've seen here on the show is that at some point, they also migrated into doing and monetizing more and more for the partner, specifically when it's about, when it's a relatively offline industry and it's about organizing bookings, et cetera. Is it something that you already do? Is it something that you are you are planning to do? Or is the entire uh, platform and the monetization strategy mostly focused on the customers, on the large corporates, so to speak? So, no, we, we monetize on both sides, right? And this industry, is it's very common if you think about Amex, which is one of our, you know, Amex travel, not the credit card. This is one of our competitors. And it's quite common in Germany to monetize through commissions. And, and that's also what we do. But we also offer a completely commission-free service to our corporate clients. But when what you mentioned is like, you know, going more into software and offering additional products. We do that. So far, all the additional products we give to our partners are entirely included in our basic package, right? So we offer them builders so they can create offers real fast. And we offer the messenger services, et cetera, et cetera. So all this comes practically included in the, in the basic price. But on the other side, on the corporate side, we offer now participant management systems, you know, allowing them to send the invites, make sure they know who's actually coming and then therefore can cancel the hotel rooms automatically. So we build additional software that then can be used by the corporates for the entire planning of the event. So actually this kind of, we're going a little bit more in, in building additional services on that side. Quite, quite interesting, Paul. Maybe one follow-up question on specifically the pricing models. As you mentioned, you have already in the base package quite a wide array of features. And you also offer, which is not always common, a completely commission-free model. I guess monetization will be probably then mostly on kind of like a SaaS fee. How do you feel that, I would say, pricing strategy features, unlocking features, usage of features, and the mix of commission-based and non-commission-based is going to evolve for you guys. And where would you like to see this evolving? Just a background of this question. I've discussed here a lot of times with marketplaces, but also with platforms, how they would love to see the ideal mix of, of their income. And obviously, coming from the SaaS world, uh, some of these platforms want to have a bit of a kicker with commission. Only commission-based marketplaces want to have kind of like more of a, a stable income. How, how do you see uh, your strategy there and, and how do you see this evolving? So I think there are certain pieces of additional software uh, which we can and will solidly base on a SaaS fee. For instance, our participant management software, that's it's a classic SaaS model, right? So you can then price it either on a seat based slash user based pricing, or you can do it on a flat fee SaaS pricing, but it's a pure software product. So it will be sold as a pure software product. On the classical procurement for of mice, yeah, so meeting incentives, etc, etc. I believe the market will 
stay kind of the the guiding way of pricing, right? So if if clients say they don't want to us to be pricing on based on commission, then we will offer that. If the market requests us to price on commission as well, we will offer that. I think the tradition in this market has been around for very very long, and as a company to change that is quite an uphill battle if you need to explain everyone why you're going to do everything differently from everyone else. And there, I believe the market will, to some extent, move a bit away from commission because you can clearly see on the provider side, more and more are not so flexible about commission, etc. But having said that, commission will stay around for quite some time. And also, it is a very German model, to be fair. Right? It's very common here in Germany. In other markets across the world, it's slightly different. But I assume this pricing will stay somewhat like that. You have a certain mix of SaaS fee plus uh, commission. And obviously, for us as a company, we always like to have a predictable income, if you want. But for that, it does not really matter if it's uh, commission-based or whether it's a SaaS fee, because if you have a client and you know this client is going to do 100 events, 200 events per year with an average of 20 people, you can calculate the commission just as well as you can calculate the SaaS fee, right? So the kind of recurringness which makes the SaaS model so attractive is a given also in a commission model when you have a contract that gives you all this kind of business. It's slightly different if you look at a model such as, for instance, Airbnb, where a client may come back, may not come back, and you may make a commission on or transaction fee on that client this year, but maybe not next year. If you obviously are in charge of the whole procurement for an entire company, the recurringness of the um, revenue is exactly the same. So in other words, we don't care too much about that, but we really follow what our clients want us to do. In terms of the model, and not necessarily in terms of the yeah. price, right? <laughs> that is quite quite an interesting interesting take, and it uh, it shows again that it really it depends on vertical by by vertical. Even this seems not to be the most I would say cyclical market. So you can really predict at the beginning of the year roughly what kind of like even commission based income can be. Yeah, for instance, I mean, we have clients who give us in October, November, the planning for the next year and say, we have these 400 seminars, these trainings we want to do. Can you please start booking them? (laughs) And the next year we'll have the same. And we know now over many, many years, 10 years or something, that it always fluctuates a tiny little bit, but more or less, it will be around that same mark. Yeah. And therefore, I mean, as long as COVID doesn't hit and you're not allowed to meet. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. There, 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 there would have been a question. I mean, there is some macroeconomic or, let's say, other influence factors. But maybe that's a good point kind of like to look now that we are um, at, the, at the turn of the year to look a bit what does uh, growth mean in, in, the, in the, this year and maybe in the years to come. Discussed a bit. The feature said how corporates are using the platform. How, how do you feel about your growth agenda in the next, let's say, one or two years? So I think we have a very exciting growth agenda ahead of us. I mean, over the last two years, we have really developed, or last two, three years, if you include COVID, and we've really developed our platform much further. And we see now that we have a product that is, well, close to perfect market fit, product market fit, right? We offer participant management system. We integrate that with our procurement of of venues, and we integrate that with the payment handling we do for them, with the compliance handling we do for them, and all these kind of things. So we are very well aligned on that. And we have onboarded a couple of of big clients uh, at the beginning of this year, end of last year, which will properly start this year, and many more to come. So we believe there's a good growth really in our local market both on onboarding new larger clients, but secondly, also on offering new and additional services, providing more services, such as the participant management system, such as better um, payment handling systems, etc. And then secondly, we also still look at uh, growing abroad. So we bought a small company in the Netherlands. We really plan to, to expand there further. We're looking at some other European countries where we'd like to expand to over the next two years. So I think the growth, our organic growth is coming from those two kind of things, expanding within our existing markets and then expanding so moderately, but expanding to new markets in Europe. And then I think I've mentioned that to you before is like, we're also looking at an organic growth. We're still very much looking, are there players which we could team up with, which we could acquire? Because we really believe that in this business, it makes a lot of sense to offer a broad solution for the entire European market and eventually the global market. And we believe that M&A can quite often be a better way of growth than competing against a local incumbent, which may already be strong, right? But maybe doesn't have the resources to win the overall 
global market. Maybe looking at these uh, opportunities and kind of like growth ambition, where do you see challenges or maybe even kind of like things to overcome to achieve that? And on the other side, uh, what can help kind of like what trends, what maybe technology um, is going to be there if, if you look at that uh, agenda that's going to support you guys? How, how do you feel about that? Yeah. So when, when looking at challenges, I think there are a few challenges in this market uh, when it comes to level of digitization. We bring together many different different service providers, like classical event venues, hotels, team event providers, small meeting room and co-working spaces on getting all them to, to work in a very digital way with one with our platform as well as with any other platform is still a challenge in the market. And there are several kind of middleware software providers, you know, channel managers, etc. But none of them really has reached a certain market penetration that you could say, okay, there is we are getting to a level where you have two, three, four providers. And with those integrated uh, t um, to our platform, we have a very end-to-end -end process that's digital. So we are still very much in this process of digitizing this market ourselves and doing a lot of those efforts from, you know, pen and paper to, to single Excel sheets to actually digital product. So a lot of that is being done by us where we believe um, it would be great if, if uh, there are um, software providers who help on provider side to do that. And then on the other hand, on the client side, we see a lot of corporates also coming from a very agency-based approach. Like, okay, when we do something, we need to be able to call someone. And you see that, and that's also why I'd like to switch, it's also like kind of an opportunity. You see people changing the way they look at um, events organization, and they see that digitization and software can provide a lot of value and make it a lot easier and a lot faster and actually allows everyone to kind of organize simple events themselves. But that is also a process which has really just started during COVID and, and that they see like we don't have the personnel, we don't have the capacity, we need help and we can do it with someone like Eventing. So we see more and more inquiries about that, which I see as an opportunity, but also we still have some kind of market education from our side to go there. The second or the third large challenge is market consolidation. If you look at the market across Europe, it is really a fractured market. Each market has a few competitors, a few smaller players. On top of that, you have MX business travel. You have Cvent as a large software provider, which are somewhat incumbents, one more on the service, the other more on the software side, where I believe they are a little bit the dinosaurs of our industry. Their technology is a bit dated or their service is a bit dated, but that is also one of those things we have to overcome is to, to make sure that in this quite fragmented market, we can consolidate that over time. I'm sure the market will consolidate. And for us, the challenge as well as the opportunity is that we are one of those who is all kind of consolidating this market. And then I think the other big opportunity is if you think about events, it's a super complex business, right? There are so many different bits and pieces to think about in particular when it comes to to events and compliance etc cetera, etc cetera. and getting all those loose ends into a software that really really has everything incorporated while being super maintainable being super user friendly is a huge opportunity for us and i think that's something where we are particularly strong at where we particularly excel at is making it really simple and i think that is one huge opportunity going forward and so so it looks like a challenging but bright future when you now because we are almost at the end and i always love to, uh, to yeah. round it up with something personal when you now think of your your role at eventing what is the most rewarding or what are the most rewarding things about your role so let's start with this most rewarding in this industry is it's a fantastic industry right we provide events we help people create moments, experiences, which usually have a very emotional, very, very rewarding kind of character, right? It's a very positive industry, which we are in. So that's the first thing to, to work on something. Think about Christmas parties we've organized. People are super happy about that or trainings where they've learned something. We create a lot of those moments for people that are super meaningful and make them usually, ideally, very, very happy. That is one thing I just like about the overall industry of we're in. The second part is We are not yet in a phase where we're optimizing, you know, the tiny last percent, which you may be doing if you're, if you're a trader in, in a company. We try to get this one extra percent, which makes a whole of a difference. But we are in, a, in an industry where we have 
so many things to improve and process wise right there's so much uh, in this uh, procurement of meeting and events that you can do faster that can do more efficient it can do more transparent etc cetera, etc cetera, that i see so many problems still ahead of us we have solved quite a few of them but there's so many more things you can still do so much better for the venues for the clients for the hotels etc that i think i will not get bored anytime soon when thinking about where where I believe we could be in five to 10 years from now, I think the way we book events will have changed in such a dramatical way that it will just never get boring in this company. I mean, every day I can come up and have new ideas what we can do even better and how we can improve this company and take the whole industry. I think the whole industry needs to change and will be entirely different when we look at it in 10 years from now. We'll think like, that's how you did it 10 years ago. Wow, incredible. And I think that's a little bit similar to how you booked hotels maybe 20 years ago where you send a fax or you call someone and you work with books and everything, and this will change a lot in this industry. And super exciting. Yeah, I, I mean, Paul, first of all, thank you so much. That was a really amazing uh, conclusion. Thank you so much for all of the insights. It was particularly interesting on kind of like how you set it up, how you kind of like build the industry, build both sides of the equation, so to speak, and also how you see the future. Thank you so much, Bob. It was uh, really nice uh, having you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to your show. Okay.